This video essay discusses and compares the styles, forms, and techniques used by Ari Foreman and Patricio Guzman in their documentaries Waltz with Bashir and Chile, the Obstinate Memory, whilst concentrating on the ways in which they portray memory, war, and trauma. War, bueno, y que ganaba. Había que esperar, había que guardar las cosas. The Battle of Chile is a three-part documentary previously filmed by Guzman. That documentary led him to create Chile, the obstinate memory, where he goes back to Chile as he screens his three-part documentary to Chileans who had never seen it before. Sin embargo, hasta hoy, la batalla de Chile nunca se ha estrenado en Chile. Durante la dictadura de Pinochet, Fue prohibida y todavía hoy los distribuidores no se sienten cómodos para exhibirla. Para muchos el tema de la memoria es un tema cerrado. What causes memory to become suppressed? The film interviews many Chileans to ask for their opinion on the subject matter. This adds an interactive side to the documentary. Cuando hay una herida en el cuerpo humano, eh, hay un tiempo en el cual nadie puede tocar la herida. Y es que la herida cicatriz. Porque si tú tocas la herida, si te metes en la herida, se infecta, se producen problemas, sangra, etc. De que si uno se queda en, en el dolor, automáticamente funciona la amnesia. Mientras que si supera el dolor y lo transforma en otra cosa, se acuerda, recuerda, empieza a, a volver a fluir las cosas. En contrast, Walt with Bashir uses a very poetic approach which shows unclear hallucinations and dreams to portray the effects of war on memory. The filmmaker Ari Fullman is given an objective to find his memory as the documentary progresses, making it appear fictional. This particular scene is repeatedly shown as Fullman tries to recall more details. He does so by interviewing friends who had been with him at war, thus making it also an interactive documentary. Notice how the animation used by Fullman is intended to look like cartoon. That was done because the audience reacts to animated documentary in a much different way than traditional live action documentary. The images are personal and friendly. We are willing to receive animated images without putting up any barriers, opening ourselves up for a powerful and emotional experience. The simplicity of the images relieves some of the harshness of the topic being described. At the very end of the documentary, another variation of this memory is shown. Those women are all walking together in one direction as they cry in agony. The audience follows them in a tracking shot to find that Fullman is standing at the very end of this road. The camera continues to zoom in on Fullman giving us a close up of his very guilty face. We come to understand that Fullman had forgotten his memory due to the guilt he felt. When the music, narrative and animation style all reach a climax, at this point the animation gives way for real footage of that historical event to appear. The dream is over for Fullman and the harsh memory uncovers. <laughs> Walt with Bashir is a reflection on the insanity of war. After screams of grief, absolute final silence fills the documentary. Sound here or lack of sound is used to symbolize death. Those images shown are also similar to the historical footage of the Nazis. This is a graphic scene used to shock the audience and to validate the entire documentary, as it is what many consider to be real footage. Ari Fullman argues in an interview. Who decides what is more true? I mean, if you would have seen my image on a screen, whatever screen it is, and it was a digital image or an analog image, 
shot by a camera, it was still made by pixels, by dots and lines. It was not me sitting on the screen, right? And this is a drone image, so both of them use the same voice. So is it more true when it's pixelized than when it's drawn? I don't know. I don't think so. While Fullman contrasts the animation with reality, Guzman's strategy consists of creating a contrast between the images of the palace and the past and the image of the palace and the present. We see an extreme close-up of Jean's eyes as old images are shown. This reflects to the audience that he is remembering the events that occurred here. This graphic view in Waltz with Bashir is used to give an emotional response to the documentary. In contrast, Chile, the obstinate memory, shows graphic images to the Chileans who may have relatives in the events of September 11, 1973. This triggers an emotional response from the Chilean people. Felipe no había llegado ese día. Y me oí todo. No, no entiendo cómo el hombre puede llegar. Se está buena. Perhaps the most affecting interview is that with Carmen Vivanco, who is pointed out in the footage of the Battle of Chile. Carmen Vivanco. ¿Cómo? Carmen Vivanco. Sí, ella, Carmen Vivanco. ¿Es usted esa persona que está ahí? Tengo mis dudas. Puede ser que cuando estaba más joven. Tengo entendido que esto tiene años. 23 años. Puede ser, pero tengo mis dudas. Her inability to remember herself communicates the terrible tragedy to the audience. Surely the obstinate memory shows the work of remembrance in a dialogical memory that leads the characters to live in the shock of remembering through memories filled with biographical details. The documentary not only captures the interactive and reflexive encounters in which audiences respond to Guzman's The Battle of Chile, but it is also a film about Guzman's return to the original location of the film trilogy. Guzman returns to witness the transformation of the Chilean society after the trauma. There is also an expository element created when the film in the beginning explains what the film will be about. However, the commentary does not use a third-person narrative. It uses the first person which makes it a first-person film. The elements of subjectivity that came from it being a first-person film do not undermine the fact that the archival footage and this film are also an objective rendering of that certain history viewed from several different points of view. El país estaba super mal. Fue duro, o sea, fue un golpe, claro, fue hubieron heridas, se podría decir. Llegar a matar a personas por idea es como llegar demasiado al extremo. Boicotearon el gobierno y encima después hicieron un golpe de estado, no pudieron esperar a llegar a una solución buena. Yo creo que si nosotros tuviéramos gente que conociéramos que fueron torturados o matados, yo creo que pensaríamos muy at the end of the documentary, a man is shown speaking directly to the camera, making statements without being interviewed. Debemos asumir la tarea de constituirnos en imágenes vivientes para que los jóvenes... That shows a very advanced level of interaction in the documentary. Furthermore, this reflects the anger that the Chileans hold within themselves towards their unforgotten suppressed memories. Obstinate memory is an excellent example of how memory persists just under the surface, even though society has seemingly moved on. Perhaps one of the most touching poetic elements used in this documentary is the metaphorical image of an elderly man attempting to play the piano but is unable to. 
This creates the idea that the piece of music itself is like the memory that the film is trying to bring back, but it's faulty. In conclusion, I found that both documentaries have elements of almost each single form of documentary. Waltz with Bashir uses poetic camera movements, lights, sound, edits, and a poetic dialogue. Comparatively, Chile, the obstinate memory, is primarily informative, but often uses poetic commentary and some poetic images, i.e. the image of the pianist. Both films are reflexive and are very personal as both filmmakers portray their painful past through their documentaries. Both films are performative as the filmmakers are in search for their memory and identity throughout the documentary. Both documentaries are interactive as both filmmakers interact with the interviewees who are there to help them formulate their own history. Chile the Obstinate Memory uses slight expository conventions at the start but soon shifts into the first person narrative making it a personal documentary. Those documentaries were both successful in informing their audience about memory, war and trauma and raising an anti-war statement through their documentaries. <laughs>